Hello everyone. A grand good evening to all of you. Basically, in this web series, what we call a cluster of sure GPAT Niper questions, we are moving to the part three of our web series. So the first two episodes are already being done, each being posted last two nights. You will find the first video in the description of second video. And here where I have posted cluster of short GPAT Niper questions part three. You will find cluster of short GPAT or Niper questions part two in the description box of this video. You just need to click on the drop down arrow and you can go through that particular video as well. Just for your information, if you want to get posted with all such videos on daily basis, ensure you click on the subscribe button along with the bell icon so that you're notified every time a video is being posted. At Palmy Light, we are also running a free WhatsApp group where we daily post five questions, some study material, job openings, and many more. If you want to be a part of that free WhatsApp group, feel free to reach out to us on to this particular given number. Going further, we discussed multiple things in the past two videos. We discussed about different applications, we discussed about serological tests, video isomers, which drug is having more activity, which isomer in. What was the diagnostic agent as well i suppose we ended over here in the last video going ahead we'll be talking about the third part of our video where we'll be discussing things further basically here we are going to talk about drugs and stereoisomers furthermore when we're talking about drugs and stereoisomers it's only for us to have a better understanding if at all the question comes again asking specifically on which enantiomer of the drug is more active or having the activity rather. In case of chloramphenicol, there are two chiral carbons. Both are in the RR enantiomeric form. When it comes to ethambutol, in its two stereoisocenters, two chiral carbons, it is the SS isomer which is active. It is the SS isomer of ethambutol which is anti-tubicular. But if you have RR enantiomer, it causes toxicity. If you have RR enantiomer of ethambutol, it causes toxicity. I leave it up to you. You can find out and just post it in the chat box. It's an important MCQ again. With regards to cycloserin, it's the dextroisomer. With regards to ephedrine, it is 1R and 2S. So stereocenters being specific, at first it should be R, at second it should be S. In pseudoephedrine, it's both SS for methyl ephedrine. Methyl dopa, you again have specific RS just the way you had for ephedrine. So wherever you have RNS specific, you can mark them together. When it comes to morphine, there are five stereo centers, all being in different manner. Talking about quinine and synchronidine, which basically is your anti-malarial. There the stereoisomer is 8S9R. Let's not forget that. When it comes to quinidine, if you happen to remember last video, we talked about quinidine. Quinidine is an anti-arrhythmic drug. In that case, it is 8R9S derivative. Erythritol tetranitrate, you have two chiral carbons with isomer being RS. So these two drugs which are RS, methyl dopa, ephedrine, and tet erythritol tetranitrate. So the short form becomes MEAT. MEAT basically M stands for methyl dopa, where it is RS. E stands for ephedrine, where it is again RS. And then you have ET, which is for erythritol tetranitrate which is again rs no doubt you can also incorporate meat tq yeah to meet qc quality control department mein mill lo, meet qc this q is for quinidine c is for synchronin which is again rns that's how you can make it easy for yourself going further you have few more drugs in but let's try to make it easy like if you check for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs all the propionic acid derivatives which are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs they all have its S isomer which is active. They all have their S isomer which is active. Same way for all the A's inhibitors, let it be captopril, analapril, it's the SS isomer which is more active. Further, with regards to sartralin also, it is SS. So just the way we grouped RS on the previous slide, you can group SS over here. There are three drugs which are having SS configuration. Sartralin, your all ACE inhibitors and your insects. For rest, not as such big a challenge. Going to the most important part nextly, where there have been a question always, and you will always find a question on this topic. Good amount of possibility that we might go wrong over here. So we at Farmelite has basically made adverse drug reactions easy to memorize. What we have done is we have grouped 
drugs which are having a common area. So if I talk about osteoporosis, osteoporosis is being caused by glucocorticoids. It is also being caused by heparin. It is also being caused by thyroxin. So there are three drugs which cause the same ADR. So we have grouped drugs together on the basis of ADR being caused by them. That's how you can plan to do it on your side as well. When it comes to neural tube effect, it is being caused by carbamazepine and valproic acid. Hematuria is for methacycline. Discoloration of skin is clofazamin. Talking about phototoxicity, it's very specific with your fluoroquinolones as well. If you happen to remember your sparfloxacin. Same way, you have even demiclocyclinin, which can cause phototoxicity. Pancone syndrome has been a favorite question multiple times. So if it's an expired tetracycline or an outdated tetracycline, Pancone syndrome can be one of the major areas. Further, you also have vestibular toxicity. Now, with regard to vestibular toxicity, it's with minocycline specifically. So, yes, with regards to vestibular ocular toxicity, also there are differentiation. I'll take you through that as well. On this particular slide, the ones which I have star marked, they are important. Going further, talking about peripheral neuropathy. Now, just check the number of drugs which are there. And they are all from different chapters. Fulbutamide is an anti-diabetic drug. Ethambutol is anti-tuberculosis drug. Isoniazid is a different category. Didanosin, different category. Stavudin, again, antiviral like it. Paclitaxel, anti-cancer. So there are drugs which are from different category. Procarbazin, again, anti-cancer. Phenytoin, also a different category. Cisplatin, again, anti-cancer. So what you can try and remember is there were a good amount of anti-cancer drugs which were leading to peripheral neuropathy. At the same time, one anti-diabetic was there, one anti-tuberculosis was there, few antivirals were there. So if you are not able to memorize each and every drug, try to go via category. Not sure that this would always help out, but it will take you somewhere close. Hopefully, if not some worst, at least something in anti also, if you take example of cholestatic jaundice, it's being caused by a vast number of drugs. To a good extent, they are your steroids, androgens, anabolic steroids. Again, you also have your different drugs like oral contraceptives and even they cause cholestatic jaundice. Let's check about chlorpropamide. So when you will study chlorpropamide separately, you will observe it causes peripheral neuropathy. It also causes cholestatic jaundice. So when you are doing this drug separately, that time you might read two ideas for that drug. But here we are grouping them together. Talking about next three, they are favorite of all the different exams. Let it be GPAT, NIPER, ICT, MTech, Manipal, BITS, NIRMA, any entrance. These three are fa very favorite of all of them, hepatotoxicity. So hepatotoxicity is being caused by different drugs again. You have your different drugs right from anti-leprosy to even anti-tuberculosis so yes try and remember the category if you cannot go in detail i suggest try and go in detail because these three are far more important so try and memorize all of them we can make a mnemonic everywhere here there but ensure your mnemonics are also easy to remember otherwise it would be only mnemonics and nothing being possible to remember we have your valproic acid your tacrin propyl thiouracil which is an anti-thyroid drug Streptomycin and few more drugs in which cause hepatotoxicity. Cardiomyopathy is a very classical feature with donorubicin and doxorubicin. You also have your other drugs, adramycin, which is again doxorubicin only, not dosorubicin, it's typo error. You also have your methotrexate, which causes cardiomyopathy. You have lithium, phenothiazines. He has a good amount of drugs in over here. Tisulfiram like reaction is with like metronidazole, tefimenadole. Sepotitan, Mosulam, Sepopirazone, again chlorpropamide. So you can remember that chlorpropamide causes disulfiram like reaction, it causes cholestatic jaundice, it also causes peripheral neuropathy. Group them together, make it easy for you to memorize. Even memory, even memorization in a different way wherein you can relate things easily helps you to remember ADRs to a good extent. And yes, they all are important. Going further, I was mentioning about different toxicity. So if it's auditory autotoxicity, there are a good number of drugs. Your NSAIDs, vancomycin, a very critical thing with ethacarinic acid, classical one. Also along with your aminoglycoside, multiple times you might have read autotoxicity, nephrotoxicity. The same way over here, it causes vestibular autotoxicity as well. 
along with quinidine, quinine, there are a few more drugs like vancomycin, which was again a part over here. You also have ethacrinic acid over here as well. So autotoxicity is a very classical feature with ethacrinic acid as well as aminoglycoside. It's their favorite. And if you talk specific for vestibular autotoxicity, it's classical with furosemide. When it comes to alteration of color vision, you have different drugs like sulfonamide, streptomycin, barbiturates, digitalis, quinine, and streptomycin. Another important one is gynecomastia, it's being caused by different drugs like digitalis. Also, your diuretics like spironolactone. I hope you remember it's a prodrug or not. I don't know. It's a prodrug or not. So, wherever you read such drugs, you should be able to relate them. You also have testosterone, ketoconazole, ethionamide, again, phenytoin in. Don't forget phenytoin. Phenytoin is their favorite drug. I'll show you where it comes again. It's gynecomastia and again, it's in your hyperplasia. Both the places you have phenytoin. You will find this question for phenytoin coming up three times in NIPER itself in last five years. Three times. First dose phenomena, basically where the blood pressure drops in, you have your different drugs like Prazosin, Morumunab CD3, Saragam Rostim, and again ACE inhibitors, which is majorly with your Captopril as a drug. Again, when it comes to hypoglycemia, drop in blood sugar, your oral hypoglycemic agents, your insulin, quinidine, Again, your salicylates have given in higher dose and your pentamidine. Metallic taste is again classical with a category of drug where you have metronidazole, acetazolamide, disulfiram, vincristinin, or anafin. If you ask me the important ones from this particular slide, I have ticked those five. You can ignore the rest three. They are not as such that critically important which others are. Going lastly, I told you about phenytoin again. So, gingiver hyperplasia, and hirsutism. Three classical ideas for phenytoin is prolonged QT interval. There are multiple drugs. You can just read through all of them. Hemolytic anemia in G6PD deficient individuals. Again, this is important. Hemolytic anemia in glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficient individuals. You have your chloramphenicol, which is classic, along with dapsone, primaquin, your different sulfonamides, your quinine. At least remember five, six drugs if you cannot remember all of them. I understand biotin all the drugs would be difficult, but try and at least catch up on few of them. When it comes to Steven Johnson syndrome, again, this is also important. Most of us know it majorly with regards to sulfonamide. Very few of us know that it's being caused by lamotrigine, thiazetazone, allopurinol, and bisacodyl as well. For focomelia, thalidomide is the drug which causes it. Focomelia is shortened limbs, right? Or floating limbs. There is another drug which has, again, another disorder which is floating limbs. Find out that because focomelia is known to all of us. Very few of us know what is floating limbs, which drug causes it. It is some amphetamine or something. I leave it to you. You can drop the answer in chat box. Again, gray baby syndrome, which is by chloramphenicol. Then you have tubular neuritis, which is with ethambutol. So it is going to be the RR enantiomer of ethambutol, which is going to cause this ADR. I again leave it up to you. I suppose you should be able to correlate it because we spoke about ethambutol SS activity in the previous slide. Alright, that's all as of now for today's videos. Further, we'll continue with HLV. Keep sharing the video, show us your love and we'll keep supporting you and all the best for a upcoming GPAD 2021. Like, learn, share together. Thank you so much everyone.